Hi, welcome back. Another live stream. More painting. That's right. We're going to continue with the rataclism of all things. I have picked a very bizarre monster. And um, yeah, just making sure I've got everything sorted out. So grab your paints, your brushes, your miniatures. You can join me by all means. Feel free to ask questions. I will certainly do some Q&A through this um, or just answer whatever questions you might have. Get comfortable and we'll make this happen, okay? So yes, should be lots and lots of fun. Okay, let's get started. Hi, welcome to How to d d My name is Fred Weller and today I'm going to do some painting. And while I'm painting, I'm certainly going to do some Q&A or questions and answers for anybody who's interested. What am I painting? I'm painting the Rataclism. That's right, the Rataclism. I know it sounds bizarre. It's only part way finished. We've still got a little way to go. This miniature was pretty much bare. I had to do some priming, do some very little cleanup actually, very good miniature. I'm aiming for something like this. Do not mention the word pink. I am not painting this thing pink. Pink is not scary, okay? For anybody who's figuring out, oh, but rats are kind of pink. No, we're not doing pink. Thank you very much. No, instead we're going with uh, more of a white and a green color to it. And I'm going to, of course, do some other things as well, but that's, that's beside the point. So, how's it going, Milton? Yes, it's an adorable little rat, isn't it? It's not actually that small. It's pretty, it's, it's a large miniature. So let's do the hashtag question thing. Um, have I got it typed in right? I think I do. Let's put that up there. Let's pin that little sucker. And I will talk about whatever people want to talk about. Dungeons and Dragons, role play games, not a problem. We can do that. Okay, we're going to get started real fast. I'm going straight for the green. Now I'm going for the throat. That's right. So I've picked uh, troll skin. I'm going to follow that up with the Feywild Emerald colour, which is a little bit lighter. And then we're going to go with the um, Grug Green. So it's a lot more fluorescent in colour. I know that seems a bit weird, but trust me, I feel like that's going to work in this case. So we'll give it a shake and get started. I had an accident <laughs> yesterday with my white. Um, it went kind of everywhere. But I feel like we're, it's under control now. <laughs> in other words, the paint is dried. <laughs> and it didn't make too much of a mess. So that was the main thing, right? Okay. So we're going to go with a, a dry brush. That one, actually. Or is that big? No, we'll go with the bigger one. We'll go with this. We're going to cover a bigger area. Because what I want to do with this thing is I want to sort of make it look much more like the image or picture that I found of this thing. So I'm going to go mostly for the the belly, but there will be some other sections that will get a bit of green as well, just sort of a tinge to it, and then we'll move on and start doing the sort of um, red veins and, and so forth, and doing the claws and all that sort of stuff. Okay, so that's the plan for today. Uh, do you think Tiefling should have cur curly horns? Serious, serious question. Ah, that's a really serious question, mate. Cool, blimey, you've, you've, you've made the questions too hard for me. Look, if you want curly horns on your t um, tiefling, tiefling, whatever the heck, if you want curly horns, you want um, straight horns, I don't mind. <laughs> you do it however you want. Drafted. <laughs> I'm not sure <laughs> I should change them or not. You do whatever you like with it, mate. I, 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 I don't know that this is a, a, a thing in the game that we need to really sort of concern ourselves that much with. I'm putting quite a lot of green on the belly, as you might have already noticed. And right now we'll get rid of some of that. And we'll lighten it up a little bit around the other areas. And I, I'm going to use, I'm going to put a lot, quite a lot of green on this, I think, um, just because I like the idea. Although it will get lighter and lighter the further out we go. And we're going to go with a little bit of green around the heads of these things, like so. Doop, 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 doop. And I think we even go with the main head with a little bit of green as well. I, th I feel green is a scary color. Like pink is not really a scary color. And some of the hand sections will have a tinge of green on the inside. 
and that one there as well on the outside as well I am going to do the chains last for those of you who are wondering what am I going to do with the uh, that section now I'm probably going to go with um, a metallic color which I'll do very much near the end rather than right now okay so if you look if anybody was like oh I, there's no way I could paint this thing trust me man you can you can paint this thing it, it ain't that hard that it, it really isn't that hard okay so we've got plenty of green in various places we're going to move on and grab the next color which is a fey wild emerald i'm moving fast today uh technically it's not a tea fling it's a, a diamond hybrid homebrew thing ah, okay well if it's a homebrew thing and you've homebrewed it you could make it whatever way you like um, does that really matter I wouldn't think that it does, frankly. I think you can probably do whatever you like. Now, this is only a slight difference in color. Now, I would normally wash out my dry brush, but if I do that, it, the brush is going to be too wet, so I'm, I'm actually going to not do that at all. I want to move from one color to the next fairly quickly. And this one, a lot less green. And we'll just uh, stroke across there, around the belly. I might have to go back over the belly a little bit more, but we'll see how we go. Because it's just a little bit light just in this area here, which I don't want that to happen. I'm fine with the other areas, that's all right. Top of the head, around the side of the head. Okay, let's do it again. I know what you're thinking, will this be any good? I don't know. This is the thing, when you paint something, you're never too sure how it's going to turn out. So I'm going to hit the areas that were dark, and I'm also going to hit a little bit further out. So there's going to be a little bit more green going on. And that's actually fine. And I'm, I'm fine with there being some white patches, if you're wondering what I'm, I'm doing here. I honestly... I'm going more for what I saw in that picture, but a little bit more green. That's obviously what's going on here. Okay, more green than I saw before. All right, let's do this again. And then what's going to really, the, the grung green is going to really make things um, stand out. I think that's what's going to really help things a lot. Okay, that's there. It's lighter. Spread it out a little bit. What's that, um, Milton? If you lost um, out your um, drive brakes and it got wet, wouldn't that be wet brush? <laughs> yep, <Yeah>, whatever. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, okay. All right. Um, we'll do a, just one more shot at this and then we'll move into the next color. Moving fast today. What's all that about? Who knows? <laughs> yep. I'm not really too worried about going with the feet. We'll leave the feet alone mostly. Okay, so um, back to the stomach, I think. I'm just going to add a little bit more of this. So I don't think it's quite dark enough there. All right, okay. All right, next color. Uh, what's that? Sorry, I didn't read the um, our speech to text till till you started. Oh, okay. All right. Use oh, okay. Well, that would explain the uh, the mix up on in questions. If anybody has any questions regarding um, Dungeons and Dragons and roleplay games, you're welcome to ask those questions, by the way. Okay, here we go. We're going with, this is the, the Grung Green. This is really, really light. So I'm going to have to be very careful about what I do with this because this could really mess things up, I suspect, um, if I do too much. So I'll get it on, brush it off, and then I'll try it. Probably not on the stomach, actually. 
what am I doing here? There, that's what I'm doing. I think that's about right. Okay, so let's hit it around there. So that's lightening it up just a little bit. Gotta be careful about hitting the stomach too much. Okay, let's do that again. I feel like that worked pretty well. So we'll do that a little bit on the hands. And that one here in the center, that side. Not too much, just the high areas. Very, very subtle if you ask me. Nobody would accuse me of being subtle, frankly, but uh, maybe today. That's working out pretty well on the face, so we'll do that again. I like that, that's good. Yeah, I feel like that's actually helped a lot. That was a, a good decision. Okay, all right, now, there and there. Just a little bit there. Okay. Not bad. Let's do that one more time, and I think that's that's probably enough. And I'm ready to move on, which would be oh, amazing. Um, how would you kill a necromancer? Because I'm planning on using a... <laughs> a <laughs> right. So, actually, somebody asked me... Let's not talk so much about a necromancer, but how would somebody destroy a lich? And there's there's a couple of things to... So let's, this kind of answers your question, and it kind of is sort of a, a, pr a prelude to what I might do in the future. I don't normally explain how to destroy monsters, but I've been toying with the idea. So we all know, well hopefully, that uh, liches have a phylactery. Finding a phylactery is one thing, but they are almost always well protected. So you've got to find the manner in which they are destroyed. So you absolutely have to probably talk to the, the lich. The one thing the lich is not going to do is communicate that information to you. So that's a very hard um, criteria to actually deal with. If, if that's what you're contending with and trying to destroy a lich, how do you actually get the information out of them? And frankly, I think one of the only ways that will make, make sense is um, to actually destroy the lich first and before it reforms, once you have found the phylactery, or even if you haven't found the phylactery, is to actually use Speak With Dead. That might actually work. That might actually give you the information that you require because there are some criteria with um, Speak With Dead, which mean that they pretty much can't lie to you. They, they have to reveal the information that you want. So I think that's one thing. The other thing to remember is if you're going to go after a lich, okay, if you're going to go after somebody who has been around a long time, has probably had plenty of time to prepare some very nasty things and probably has a force or army of undead with them, you better bring your own army, at least a small force. I, feel like, I mean, I don't, when I say a small force, I don't like five or six. Like just you guys is not going to be enough. The party's not enough. You better bring yourself your own small army to deal with whatever that lich has got waiting for you. That would be your very first step. Now, normally a lich can't hide their phylactery uh, in a completely different um, dimension, right? They have to, It has to be on the same plane. They can't draw power from it. Unless, of course, they go into a different dimension every day to actually feed off the, the energy of that phylactery. Uh, which, of course, if there's, that's one way of doing it. So it's either going to be in the same dimensional plane as them, well hidden, and probably not going to look like anything that's obviously a phylactery that you've still got to figure out how to destroy. But if you don't have that, there may be a, a portal or a gate or something that they use to get them there. Again, information you might have to pull out of a, a dead um, lich once you've destroyed it. Uh, there is one thing you can be sure of, that they're going to be better at magic than any of your spell casters, so the chances are that they are going to be able to counter your spells. Let's have a look at what we're going here. I'm going, going with, I think I've kind of got what I was after. Yeah, that looks pretty good. 
Um, that there. So I think we're going to start hitting the ears and some of the veins with some red and the eyes because we want it to make it look pretty evil. So that's what we're going to do right now. Is let's get this um, this red going. Bump, 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 bump. Yep, yeah, okay, that's it. We've got it. We've got it sussed. Right, red it is. So smaller brush, picking up the veins. Going to be interesting. Move these colours on. Uh, that's going to stay there. And two brushes, standard brush and the fine brush. And what do I want? I think. I think I'm going to go with the the fine tip brush because frankly I don't think I can do it with a standard brush. I think it'll be too hard. So we'll flip that over. Um, Another related dumb question, would a a quarter keg be a approximate size of the vessel for what 50 bottles of high brew spirits to be poured into to make a giant mock? Well, that's a very good question. I have no idea. I could just say yes. How about I just say yes? Yeah, there's your answer. That was easy. <laughs> So we go into the cavity where the eye is with this red. The problem with red, like almost every red, is that you usually got to do it more than once. That's the real drag with red, because you, you've almost always got to cover that same area with red multiple times. M14, how's it going? Um, I name her Karen Grumpy. Ugly as sin. <laughs> Wearing a loose green uh, summer dress. That <laughs> nice. I love it. That's right. It's the summer dress. It's it's all it's the fashion now. There, that ear. That was that was hard, man. I trust me, but I was I was trying to keep my hands still, but it was like shaking like a leaf. <laughs> God knows how I'm supposed to get the centre of that thing, but I think that worked out pretty well. Well, that worked out alright too. Nicely done, nicely done, okay. What, what sort of, uh, hmm, who would the dress be made by? That's the question. <laughs> okay, this next year. Go with big ear first, and then I'll, I'll head for the smaller one. Tricky stuff, tricky stuff. What? What's that? In a particular, hate this necromancer, come to think of it. Well, you're not supposed to like necromancers. It's not like they go around trying to um, to win friends. Most of their friends are are dead. <laughs> well, we wouldn't even call them friends, would we? Not really. Not really friends. Now, this, this eye on this other side is so small and in such an awkward place. Okay, aim. Got it. That was hard. <laughs> that that t the, the, the creepy deformed um rat monster should be my character's pet no it's not that no it's not it's not a pet this this thing is going to eat your pet it's it's a pet eating monster so instead of throwing giant rats at your plum party at low level <laughs> Yeah, you can do that and follow it up with this. And that'll that'll make up for the fact that they had to um, swat numerous rather boring giant rats. <laughs> okay, all right. So uh, next eye, a lot of eyes and, and ears. Yep, did it. Ha, 
Ha! Made it happen. Dead fun friends. That's right. Dead fun friends. That's those are the friends to have. <laughs> I've run a couple of liches, and I've always found that um, my players always assume that their spells are going to work. And um, Globe of Invulnerability is a, a very common spell that will deal with level 3 spells downward. So don't assume that it's going to work, mate. If it's level 3 or downward, the chances are they won't even have to counter spell. They'll already have Globe of Invulnerability up. Now, is there an eye on that side that I can even see? I think that's it there. It's hard to know. It is hard to know. That is so hard to see. Uh, oh, yeah. And undead revenants. Undead revenants are a bad, new, a bad news. I've had a party who um, had a member who was a revenant. Very, very difficult to deal with. Okay, so some of the... The veins on this, I've got to try and get them done without ballsing it up. That's right, I'm getting quiet. I'm getting quiet because I've got to try and follow this little trick of plastic here. Don't hold your breath. Don't hold your breath. Breathing normally. <laughs> Breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth. <laughs> um, they can be as invulnerable as um, as they like. Yeah, to a, to a large extent. I mean, I still I still try to run um, a lich based on the the dynamics of the spells and. And things that are available in the game but that doesn't mean I wouldn't use some of the character features and options that are available I absolutely would do that um, certainly change things up a lich alone isn't really going to do very do very much you really do have to work with other things that's looking pretty good I'm pretty happy with um, how that's coming out What do you people, what do you think? Does that little streak of red look all right? Here we go. All right, let's give that a wash. Hit the next one. So I'm still working my way through. So I've got monsters I'm supposed to talk about on Friday. It, it looks like I'm going to wind up with AJ Pickett, Wally DM, and um, Denny from Dicely D&D. And we're going to be talking about how to make your yeti, your minotaur, your troll, and your mind flay out more interesting. Those are the four monsters I have selected. I've pretty much got my mind flayer sorted out in terms of what I want to talk about, in terms of my discussion. I am still, I've got a, one idea for the yeti, which is kind of crazy. Um... I am still struggling a little bit with, uh, I mean, I've got one idea for the troll, but it's really something I've done before, um, although I can still present it. I'm kind of really struggling with the Minotaur, because uh, the idea I came up with was, well, I would say average. Average in quality. That was my feeling. Um... What's it? M14, uh, would a magic rod go through a lich if triggered? Well, that's a good question. What sort of rod are we talking about? Are you trying to use the... Um, is there a particular rod you're trying to shove through it? I think that what people forget is that liches tend to make magic items, right? And if you're going to deal with a necromancer, it's, you know, probably the, the worst type of necromancer would be a lich. 
And so they will be aware of a lot of these things. They will have backup plans. Right. How's that look? Have I got it? No, it's not too bad. That's pretty good. Okay, so what have I missed? Is there any more veiny bits that I... Look, let's just have a look at the original picture. The immovable rod. Right. So you're trying to um, extend it into the lich so it does damage. Yeah, it's probably all it's going to wind up doing is is pushing the um, lich back, I think. Um, my minotaur is called Derek and is a blacksmith paladin. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to need a bit more than that. Thank you for the offer. But yes, I think I'll have to come up with something better than that. I'm doing a good job. Good. <laughs> That's good. To, let's see. Let's have a look at this thing again. Where's that picture? And just have a quick... Okay, so I've done the front section. They kind of missed... Actually, I think I might have even done a better job than they have in terms of actually getting the veins in. Um, did I miss a vein there? Yes, there is a vein. Okay, now I see it. The, I didn't see it before. Now it is. There it is. Found it. Thank you. That helps. I've got it now. I see it. I completely missed it. It's right there. Wow. Man, that is going to be hard work trying to get this to line up. <laughs> Hello, Joe. How's it going, Overboard DM? Um... We are only level 3 and I just hope it, it's something a little um, weaker than a level 14 Banshee. Well, look, level four, ban um, four if you've got a level 14 Banshee and it's not level 4, run away. Because a level 4 Banshee is bad enough. Just run away. Your dungeon master will figure out what to do. Okay? If you can't deal with it, you just you, you bug out. That's the deal. You made it, Joe. Yes, I, I'm assuming that you've been working late and uh, shift work and all that sort of stuff. What do you think, Joe? Was this a good selection? Was this the good pick? I know some people would have said you should have just paint, painted the beholder, but I actually thought this was far more interesting. I've painted about two beholders. I've got another one to paint, but I'm not really keen on painting it right now okay so that needs a streak down there as well getting the bloody bits in getting the bloody bits in there we go that worked out nicely yeah i thought it was pretty cool too uh, did you miss the eyes on the other head? No, I don't think I did. I got the eyes on this one, eyes on that one, eyes on this one. I think one of the eyes might be slightly m mucked up, but I'll fix it if I have to. Um, ah, yes, there's there's a little bit more more to capture just just there. I can see that little ribbon of flesh. That's where the vein goes. Yeah bit on the side there oh fine detail if you guys were looking for big huge changes that's not going to happen today this is complicated hard stuff all right let's make sure i've captured all of the veiny bits that i needed uh, back to my picture because that's been really helping um more veins ah on the leg there's a bit on the leg i can see that now right there and a little bit further up on the chest area so that's leg chest area leg chest area Leg, chest area. I'm trying to remember these. Leg, right there. There's the vein. Did I get all of it? I think so. Yep. And then chest area. Where's the vein? I just don't see. I think that they've painted it in and thinking there's a vein there and there's not a vein there. I really don't think there's a vein there. I don't see it. And I have really tried to pick out everything. There are some veiny bits over here on the other side, on the other leg, which I have spotted. There are one, two, three. So we'll do them. One, two. 
So once I get the veins done, I am probably going to start going for the claws. Left nipple, right chest. Okay. All right. Left nipple, right chest. I do apologize for the help. I know some of you have painted this before. And there's another little bit there. A little bit strange that little section there. Um, yeah, I'm not really. Uh, see, the, the idea is to take these monsters, that these four monsters, and come up with interesting ways they can be included in an adventure. Because, and I know a lot of people may disagree with me, but my way of thinking is that Dungeons and Dragons is about adventures and stories the adventures have with different types of monsters or various monsters that's my understanding of Dungeons and Dragons ultimately at the core of Dungeons and Dragons there are dragons of course but it's monsters so I really wanted to talk much more about how to use them in slightly different ways than people might have been used to expecting them so we don't have the same sort of approach every single time. And I feel like the people I've picked are the right people for the job. And AJ will correct us if we bulls it up. I'm sure he will. What's that, Melton? Uh, my character is a fox demon half-breed thing. A sorcerer. <laughs> oh, good lord. Uh, that is, that's, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> right now. You said left nipple, right chest. That's my left, that's my... Okay, all right, right chest. I just don't see it. I just don't see the vein. I fail to see the vein. Okay, so if I can't see the vein, I don't know what to do with it, so I'm going to leave it alone. Um, what we were going to do next is we're going to start dealing with claws, I think. And um, that seems like a sensible thing to do, so we'll do that. Uh, now, what was I doing? What was the plan with the, the claws and even the toes? I think the big claws, I need to go with a, a darker brown. So we'll go with, um, oh, I'm still unsure about going too dark. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at what we've got. What do they do? Well, the big Clory bits, they look certainly do look a bit ready brown, but I don't want to go ready brown, I'm going to go ruddy brown. So we will definitely hit them with we'll hit them with the darker brown first. No, no, we won't. No, we won't. I don't think so. I think we'll go with the the lighter brown and one transition from there, and that's enough. I don't think we need to have two transitions. So we'll ditch that one. So I'm going to go with the Minotaur hide. Uh, I'm going to switch out the fine detail brush. I'll go to the standard size. There. And flick that out. Man, time flies, doesn't it? Doesn't time fly? Okay, so Minotaur hide, following it up with ruddy skin. That's, that's the plan, because it's got a kind of a red tinge to it. I feel like that's the right way to go. Sweet. All right, let's get these claws done, shall we? No messing around. Okay, toenails. Toenails first. Let's get it. its manicure sorted out. Is it pedicure, manicure? I don't know what the heck it is. Pedicure, manicure. One of them. I suppose I should know. This sort of thing happens at work all the time. Like uh, every six weeks, they show up to do na nails. Toenails mostly. Um, okay, and let's just do the other side of that. Am I happy with that? Did I get the areas that I needed to? I think I did. That's good. Let's get the next one done. M14, what do you got here? Uh, mine is wall forged in a farm that will grow over the time that was working by goblins and other, and other things. Oh, well, nice. 
you're gonna try and join. You, you're gonna try and convince this thing to join the party. <sighs> Whoa. You should definitely get inspiration for the attempt. Just don't forget to use it. Remember, you've got inspiration. You're gonna use it that session. How many people get inspiration and forget it? My players. Every time I give it out, they just forget to even use it. And all they look at me and say, Fred, we're so cool, we're so powerful, we can do anything. We don't even need inspiration. Frankly, we're insulted that you even bother giving it out. No, they don't really say that. They just forget to use it. <laughs> That's the problem. That's the problem with, um, with that particular... Uh, the, the only time we've found it useful is when... We actually lay dice out on the table and we're playing in person and you can actually see, okay, hang on, there's that dice there. You, you rolled a, a one. You could you could roll that extra dice. Okay, right now, it means you have advantage and just get rid of it. Oh, oh you've got disadvantage. We get rid of the disadvantage by using the inspiration dice. And players forget it all the time. It's like standard operating procedure at my table in particular. Um, I don't know about everybody else's. Do you, do you guys actually remember? Do people at your table actually remember to use inspiration? It is not a topic that usually anybody gives two tosses about. I, I find I find when we start talking about inspiration, people leave. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, anyway. That's working pretty nicely. I'm pretty happy with that. I won't go too deep with that. There's a little bit of black there. That's always good. Um, what's this, uh, Milton? I think my cat has a, a plus five in persuasion. It's something ridiculous for his level. Ah, oh, okay. Cats have pluses in all sorts of places. Or intimidation. Versus a giant called Siege <laughs> Scythe Weapon. <laughs> okay, let's get that in there. So for those of you who don't know, um, Overboard DM runs a YouTube channel, deals with miniatures, terrain, a lot of stuff you probably haven't seen, anybody else do, worth checking out if you're right into that sort of thing. And um, I would say he's probably, Joe's probably better at painting than I am. Significantly better. Okay, all right, so that's that bit. I'm going to do the other side now. Uh, what inspiration must always be saved up for drinking contests? Oh, no, don't say, everybody saves it up and then they, it, they don't use it that session. It's, I, it's, like, it's folly. As soon as I get an opportunity... Miss with a dice roll, don't do so well. I always say, yep, yeah, let's use it. Even if it's not on myself, my own character. If I had it, I'd give it to somebody else. Because you can do that. People forget. It doesn't have to just be used by you if you've got inspiration. You can give your inspiration to somebody else. Uh, okay. So what do people think? Do you think Dungeons and Dragons is more about the monsters and the stories around monsters? Or do you think they the stories of Dungeons and Dragons are more about something else? I mean, you can have different types of campaigns for sure. But I feel ultimately, in the end, the story about Dungeons and Dragons always revolves around a story about the monsters. This is why the YouTube channels that do Dungeons and Dragons Monster Lore do so well. What's that, Joe? I bought some cool little things from, okay, Etsy. They are little pieces of laser cut wood. Um, it has a cut for, okay, cut for a D20 and a word inspiration written on it. Ah, so you're going to use that as a reminder. Are you playing? Look, here's, an, here's another thing. I keep hearing about people who haven't played for so long because of the pandemic. Should I should I set up my my rig and show you how to use miniatures with a webcam? Like literally, I just I'll just shoot it very very quickly. 
put it up so you guys can see it's not that hard and you just use a I, I know people don't like some people don't like the virtual tabletops I totally understand that but I feel like there are too many people who are waiting for you know things to get better and they are missing out on all that time they could be spending playing Dungeons and Dragons and yes I, I would agree Dungeons and Dragons in person is better than online you, you get much many more signals. It's, it is a much more in, fun. It's like if you're going to go have a party, you do not have a party online. You want to be in person, right? So if people wanted me to show how I do it, it's, it's seriously not that hard. Your biggest issue is having space to set up the battle map and the miniatures. But your dining room table can do it. It can it can serve that purpose. It, it helped with that meal. It can do other things as well. All right. So um, can I see what's going on there? I think I've got the claws mostly brown. Just a little bit there I missed. And on that side there. Okay. All right. So toenails claws are painted we are ready for the next color um i put a special metal dice in there and they always use them always use them never forget well that's good yeah i feel like if you can have a dice out on the table people remember to use inspiration if you don't have that they just don't remember they just forget okay so i am now using ruddy skin now, ruddy skin is actually going to wind up being used for a couple of different things. But we're going to deal with... Um, actually, I'm, I'm actually going to shift out that brush for now because I want to attack the back of my miniature right this very second. And um, I'll, I'll explain. I didn't really feel like the, the brown here on the back was standing out enough, so I'm going to hit it with a slightly lighter color. And I'm going to use the ruddy brown, uh, the ruddy skin color. I think that's probably the, going to help a lot. So, small dry brush. Flip, whoop, that's not going to work. Let's keep that out of the way. Uh, M14. I have eight goblins, six skeletons, four necrons, two... No, no I used to have... I've got a necron army, by the way. Uh, two um, peaky blinders, one raccoon folk, and one space marine. Ah, Speaking of uh, meals, I want to think of my meals. Thinking of, well, think of meals, I want to think of my meal of the day. Meal of the day? I'm lost. You lost me. I got confused. That was very easy. <laughs> so, back to my question. Dungeons and Dragons stories. Is it about the monster or is it about something else? My feeling is that Dungeons and Dragons is about the monster and the player's interaction with the monsters. Which is why I like painting monsters. Okay. I'm going to be careful what I do here. High areas first. And I go across, and I go across, not too much. Not too much. Don't get carried away. Just enough to get the job done. What do you think? I think that's worked. As long as I don't get too carried away with this, I think that has actually worked. Much better than I was expecting, actually. <laughs> we'll do that one more time. One more little shot at it, and she's done. I feel like that's helped the brown... Um, fear significantly. Um, I need to figure out how I'm going to what use my three foot wide Tiamat. Oh my gosh, that miniature is just so massive. I was so disappointing. I had thirteen people playing um, the, the day that uh, they had to face the uh, the Dragon Queen and. There was nothing I could do. There's nothing I could do to stop them from just crushing it. 
yes, I suppose I could have said, no, you can't have 13 people show up, but at public games, it's a bit hard to do that sort of thing. Um, and if you've ever run public games, you will understand what I'm talking about. Well, that helped significantly. I, I, you can have a good look at the back end now. <laughs> character journey. You feel like Dungeons and Dragons more about, about the character journey. See, see, I've always had a slightly different view. Obviously, maybe that's what's what's going on where I am I'm missing out as, as people are seeing Dungeons and Dragons about their personal character journey or the character's journey. I feel like it is certainly about the character's journey, but it's their journey with regard to their interaction with monsters um, rather than their journey full stop. Do you know what I mean? Right, so um, before I get sidetracked, I need to move on. Oh, that's right, we need to do the claws. The claws in the toe should be dry now, so we can start hitting that. Oh, sorry about that, guys. I'll turn it around. <laughs> um, yes, if, yes, you can cause the players to react differently to each monster, each encounter. That's the, that's the fun of it. Yeah, I, I feel like that's... We think very in a very similar way, um, Joe. I, I feel like it is very much about the monsters themselves and the players' characters' interaction with them. Milton. Dungeons and Dragons is about getting together and making friends. Well, that's, yes, telling a story and blaming the DM. No, not going there. Uh, when they accidentally kill <laughs> their own character. <laughs> uh, right. No, the Dragon Queen's not good. Um, location is a big part of the story. Yes, location. Yep, White Rhino, absolutely. Location is important. That's where the monster resides and lairs. That's certainly a big factor. Now. How am I going to do this? I think I am going to just hit a few key patches on the claws not the whole thing the tip along its length in a couple of places and that will be it so we are focusing on the tip oh that was did you see the shake there that stress <laughs> okay right now toes toes should be easy i'm not going to do a lot with the toes good that worked out nicely i'm pretty happy with that um yes monsters and the locations are in absolutely timat is the queen of all evil dragons that's right that's right absolutely So D and D to you is being the Witcher. No, um, I wasn't actually thinking that. See, I don't know anything about the Witcher. I've watched two episodes of it, and for me, it's it, it's it's all right. Um, and you know, when I say monsters, I don't necessarily mean that the players characters are killing monsters they might not kill the monsters they interact with them and that is sort of where my head's at see I don't see my, to my, my way of thinking the witcher is simply a duplication of dungeons and dragons like so many things So when I think of Dungeons and Dragons stories, I'm thinking, well, what's the monster here? Of course, you can have humans be monsters. But I feel like it's not quite as interesting. Okay, so that's that's how we've that's what we've got so far. I don't know that it's done too badly. Yes, locations certainly can be their own character. I agree. Absolutely white rhino. Have you played a um, a god game? 
Um, I've had players deal with gods, yes. Yep, absolutely. If, if that's what you mean. And the players, to a, to a large extent, do wind up being kind of very much godlike as they play. All right, let's have a look at my picture, see how we're, we're, we're doing in terms of what else do I need to do in here to get things to work. Okay, so in the mouth, we're going to deal with the mouth. So we're going to have to use some black. And we will. And then we're going to have to deal with, I think we're going to have to go with some zombie flesh or some skeleton bone to get the rest of that mouth and teeth sorted out. Um, but yeah, that's the plan. We'll make that happen. Doing that now. Black. Black. Done. And mouth. The big mouth. We'll start with the big mouth first. Because that should be, you'd think that would be the easiest one to deal with. Dungeons and Dragons is about figuring out what to do with my um, poison steak. <laughs> oh dear, still focused on um, <laughs> still focused on your problems there. I see. So what is the what would be the law and the story behind the Rataclism? Anybody know? Anybody? Got something they want to offer? Got an idea to add to this? Because whatever the story is, it's got to be interesting, I would imagine. It's a pretty cool looking monster. Is this the result of a lich getting a bit funky? Going a bit nuts? Has the, have the mind flayers been experimenting? Is it just a human w wizard that decided, I'm going to um, branch out and uh, go with rat uh, creatures now? We've got, uh, we've got the albear, but we need our rataclism as well. Okay, so that worked out all right. Let's get the next one done. Uh, M14. Uh, God game is start at level 20 and go until your party is killed, um, killing off the gods. No, no, um, my party played up to level 20 and we were fighting gods at the very end, but also fighting alongside gods. So they, they didn't just go, um, yeah, that's, that's the sort of game I've played and run. I'm not really into um, my players just going willy-nilly killing off gods. But to be fair, I, th I feel like all of them at the end were godlike, if not gods in, them, in, in their own right, just because they were so powerful. Things like aging and so forth are always a factor, I guess, but I mean, you know, there's ways around that eventually, isn't there? Uh, well, the Rat King is based on a ball of rats uh, with their tails tied together during the plague. Oh, okay. Uh, what's this, Milton? The DM has a cruel sense of humor for my character. There's something stupid that works. <laughs> okay. All right, so that mouth I don't have to worry about. That's good. I've got that done. I've got that black. I've got my toes. I've got my claws. I'm going to come back and deal with the um, chains... Um, I think later I don't think it's going to happen today what else was there let's keep 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 going let's keep moving and progressing uh, yes they're definitely going to need to do the teeth thing very very shortly so so I think what I will do is some of the um, chains could go with some black and then I'm going to follow up with these two colors here with the teeth and that will help pick them out and I, f I feel like that's, that's kind of the extent of it. I don't think there's too much more that needs to be done. I, f I feel like it's actually a fairly simple miniature to paint. Although I have painted this one slightly different to the picture that I selected, to be fair. It isn't exactly the same. All right, so brush, black, chains, 
very, very quickly while I wait for the mouth to, to dry because that paint is still wet. Um, what's this, Milton? A group of rats fell into a into a bat of what? Necromantic, whatever, slime. And somebody has simultaneously cast a resurrection spell. <laughs> A druid brought back from the dead while multiple rats were infesting, infested on his insides. Oh, that's gross. Um, okay, so I'm going to just say right now, um, M14 gets gets the, the winning vote. That is the most disgusting idea under the sun. That's the one I'm going to go with. Although, couldn't we add both of them together? Couldn't... Couldn't a druid be infested with rats, be brought back to life, and also be coated in this horrible ichor that you were talking about, this uh, necromantic slime? I think that's that's what we're going to go with. We're going to take both those ideas, smash them together, and say that's that's the deal. Okay. All right. Brush clean out time. But Master Splinter's origin story gone wrong. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, nice. <laughs> yes, I suppose it does have it does resemble a little bit of that. Not completely. Okay. Pretty happy with the outcome of that. How are we looking in terms of our teeth? I feel like our teeth are saying, Fred, come to me, come to me. We are ready for you now. <laughs> so so um, last little bit of black that's here, we'll use that up and then we'll go and we'll do the teeth, which means we're very, very close to finishing. But as all of you know, just because we're very, very close doesn't mean we're finished. I do have a tendency to have um, feel like I, I haven't finished things. I have to come, come back again and do it again. What will happen is I'll look at the picture and I'm like, take the photo and look at it and think, ah, there's, there's actually a few things I missed. There's a few things I would like to change, as you always do. Okay, detail brush this time. We're going for the teeth. And then, and then I'm going to take a rest. I really should be getting some work done too. There's a few things I need to get done before I disappear. Art is never finished. Yeah, there's, that's the problem though. If you've got to accept there's a point where you have to stop. And I do have a problem with it is time to stop. I know this to be a problem. Okay, so zombie flesh. I am not doing the teeth on this white. That is not going to happen. But the skeleton bone color, absolutely. I'm happy with that idea. Um, some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. No, no Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles here. They're going to go find their own Rataclism. Thank you very much. Well. That was easy. <laughs> no, he says this is the last thing I say, and I'm like, oh no, I made a mistake, gotta fix it now. Okay, so next tooth. Now there's a bottom tooth there as well. Did I hit it or did I miss it? Oh no, I missed it completely. Oh. I made a bulls up of the bottom of that one. Pet baby dragon turtle. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's try the big the big fella. Let's see if we can get um, the, the paint in the right place for him. Those top teeth there are nice and big, so they're easier to see. And then the front. Okay, more paint. Small hand movements. 
and then on the other side underneath side underneath okay almost got it a bit more okay so the teeth almost sorted the other one I don't need to worry about because the mouth is closed I ballsed up the the little little heads mouth I, I've got paint in the place I don't want it so you've got me you're gonna have to put up with me for a little bit longer well I put out some black and go and try and fix that because I, I can't I can't leave it like that it'll drive me batty so a little bit of black I think that's enough do you have any plans for Halloween? Um, I hope because uh, um, Bones have something called um, um, something called cool cool in the warehouse. No, I don't. Um, I suppose I should do some sort of special for Halloween, but New Zealand doesn't celebrate Halloween. Do you know what I mean? You know this, Milton. You live in New Zealand, so you know this. Um, but, you know, so many of the people who watch my channel are from North America, so they kind of, it's a big thing for them. So I am, I am contemplating something, but I don't know what. And I don't know if it'll be on my own or if I'll do it with, in conjunction with somebody else. Okay, fixed that bit. All right, I feel better now. <coughs> <clears throat> right now we've got we got that zombie flesh in there but we are going for the bone color this is the color i want to sort of finish up with so this is the next one on the teeth in the right place with a fine brush thank you joe for the super chat i do appreciate it ah uh, what have you got here and joe I promise not to unlist the live streams for the paints, um, painting videos. And a lot of the ones that I've hidden, I will start to make them public again. Okay. I, I Look, one of the things I really struggled with was trying to get my head around what the heck I was doing with this thing. Because YouTube was is such a pain in the ass. And I was talking to AJ Pickett who was talking about unlisting his um, live streams. And I said, dude, I'm, I'm doing the reverse now. YouTube just needs to change the way that they consider live stream content. You cannot expect somebody to watch the entire hour of a live stream content video, or even two hours. It is it is bat crazy nonsense. But if they're watching five or six minutes, or even ten minutes, that's often longer than what people are watching on a um, an edited video. So. Yeah, so they'll they'll come back. They'll I'll, they'll make sure they're in playlists so you can find stuff, um, stuff like that. Just wanted to say I really appreciate the painting streams, Fred. I'm currently at work listening. I hope uh, everybody enjoys the the painting lessons and banter. Me too. Me too. I hope they are. And yes, Joe. I um I am planning to take about two weeks off every four months. So even if I can't make this a regular thing every week or even once a month, every four months you'll have to put up with me for two weeks, probably painting f non-stop. Provided I've got miniatures, because if, <laughs> if we're still stuck in a lockdown, it's going to be difficult. Okay. Okay, well, look, let's have a look at this. Let's have a... I am not going to do anything else too fancy with the eyes because I feel like it would ruin it. Uh, another weird question. How would you go about hiring a replacement for the, a, a, a replacement heli, a pet helibly? A pet helibly? I wouldn't do it. We've got hiccups now. <laughs> okay, let's move that out of the way. Let's do a rotation so you can see the whole thing um, in all its glory. It is not finished. 
for those of you who are wondering, have I finished? No, it's not. I feel like it still needs some work. So you can kind of see what's going on there. Yes, I consider a wash a suitable uh, thing to, to do. Yes, I know that the, the metal bracelets and chains need to be painted. They'll get painted. There is actually a couple of things that I have I am toying with doing with this, with this thing, and not just what I've done so far. So for those of you who are wondering, oh, is he finished? I think I'm pretty close to finished. I feel like I'm pretty close to finished. So yes, there is... This is the problem when I'm looking at the webcam and I'm looking at the image of the miniature. I cannot figure out what's going on. <laughs> it, is, it is too hard for me to figure out exactly how, how to position it. <laughs> ah, dear. No 3D printer. I'm in New Zealand. 3D printing is extremely expensive in New Zealand. This is, it's not North America or the UK. Um, 3D printing is high-end uh, technology. And the, the filament and the, the resin is extremely expensive. It is not cheap to do. It, I know you can do it very cheaply in, New, in, in North America. But, um, and I imagine that uh, the UK and America, you know, have got it a, a lot cheaper than, little old New Zealand is just a way out of the, you know, it's, it's at the bottom ass end of the world. Uh, what are you, oh, hi Adam. Just wanted to say thank you for your Curse of Stride videos. They were incredibly helpful. Good, I'm glad they were Adam. I'm actually, I've already started planning a topic for the Curse of Strad. I don't know when that's going to be released. <clears throat> but for those people who were wondering if I was ever going to go back to doing Curse of Strad videos, yep, they are coming. They are absolutely on their way. Um, I have not forgotten about that at all. So thank you to everybody who showed up for my very long painting live stream and my ranting and raving while I paint my Rataclism miniature. <laughs> it is not finished. We've got more to do. Thank you to my patrons for supporting me. Thank you for the super chat, Joe. Um, I'd also like to say, wherever you are in the world, whether it be the morning, the afternoon, the night, or the wee wee early morning, please look after yourself, your family, and your friends. Be nice to your neighbours. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s.